Oh man, Twitter just got whacked with a big miss. Oh, it's dirty, folks. But we got to talk about something in this video that kind of relates to Twitter about how I was wrong. Let's get into it. And I don't like being wrong, but I'll be honest with you about it. Let's go. I thought that we would go into 2022 seeing a massive increase of inventory. So that is companies would see supply chains loosen up. We would see freight speed up. We would see over ordering and all of a sudden people who had already bought the stuff they wanted to buy wouldn't need to buy as much stuff anymore so stores would have tons of excess inventory and would have to cut prices contributing to a decline in inflation like what we're seeing at Target and Walmart. At the same time, when companies have a lot of product, lots and lots of product, what I thought we would see is we would actually start seeing companies advertise a lot again. That's because when you don't have a product to sell, you don't need advertising, right? Think about that for a moment, logically. If you are running a lemonade stand, and that's what you're selling, and you have five cups of lemonade that you can sell, but you have demand for, let's say, 20 cups of demand, well then, the only thing you could do is raise the prices for the five cups and hope to make a little bit more to your bottom line, but you're still missing out on a bunch of excess demand. A lot of customers are upset because there's so much demand, but you don't have the supply. So guess what you're not doing? You're not advertising to get people to come to your lemonade stand because you don't need more demand. You've got enough of that. So it was logical to me that as soon as we saw supply catch up and maybe we got to 50 cups of lemonade with 20 cups of demand, maybe then what we would see is this transition back to uh, ads. And so my thought was that in 2021, people didn't, people and companies really didn't need to advertise much because we didn't have enough stuff. And in 2022, we were supposed to have lots of stuff and then have to advertise more to be able to sell that stuff because if you have more cups, there are a few things you can do. You can drop the prices to increase demand, or you could advertise more to bring in more customers to increase demand, or a combination of both. Usually companies do a combination of both. A combination of advertising, a combination of uh, you know, reducing prices and being competitive with promotions. Uh, you know, promotions are always fun because uh, they, they give people good deals, like the 50% off coupon code on the programs on building your wealth that expires on the 28th. But you already know about the 28th and lifetime access and the discounts and all the amazing things you can learn with our analyses and our live streams together. But anyway, let's talk now about why I was wrong. So, I thought that in 2022, we would see more advertising spending. Unfortunately, that was predicated on there only being about a 20% chance of a recession or a prolonged downturn. Uh, obviously, I was very wrong about that. In the summer of 2021, I thought we only had a 10 to 20% chance of like any kind of prolonged downturn. Uh, it was obvious that the insane like hopium that we saw in November and euphoria and stuff wasn't going to last. But I don't think anybody in the summer of last year was like, oh yeah, we're knocking on the door of a recession. Uh, with the exception of, you know, some element of like, I mean, maybe, right? Like there's going to be a tightening cycle at some point in the future. But the stock market really seems to get so focused on like what's happening or going to happen in the next three to six months. Sometimes we lose sight of that longer term risk of, oh, well, there could be a recession. Of course, so that's why at the beginning of the year, when we're like, oh, crap, we actually might be facing a recession, I realized, dang it, advertising is not going to be the gameplay for 2022. So I, I was wrong because I was wrong on the thesis that we wouldn't have a prolonged downturn. We had a prolonged downturn. Okay, so what's happening with advertising? Well, it's not good. It's really not good. And what I want to help you see with advertising is this disaster scramble that a company that just reported is going through. And I don't use this service. I don't use Snapchat. I don't invest in this company. But I like to learn from companies that even ones that I don't use or invest in just to see what I can take away from them. And so I'm going to give you some really quick bottom lines here. I don't want to get too nuanced because I, I think sometimes I lose people in the sheets and uh, not everybody loves going into the sheets so much. So Snapchat, Snapchat's a company that's been losing money hand over fist. In the last quarter here, they lost $422 million. Now the thing about Snapchat though is for some reason, 
they raised so much freaking money that they're actually really well capitalized. Their capitalization is so good. They've got about $6 billion in cash and $1 billion in current liabilities, which really gives them $5 billion to just keep losing money with. Uh, and this isn't supposed to be just a snap video, but I just want to show you. That's a $5 billion coffer to go burn if you need 400 mil per quarter. They say they expect Q3 revenues to be flat year over year, which is terrible. This is a company that's losing money. Their growth is stagnating and they're slowing. And they're trying to figure out how do we get advertising fixed. Keep this in mind. This gives them about, uh, what is that? That's uh, five uh, divided by 400 mil. This gives you about 12 quarters or three years of cash that they can burn at this rate. Of course, it becomes a problem if they keep spending more money and their advertising revenue goes down. But this is where we can look at the Snap earnings call to try to understand a little bit more about what's going on in the advertising space. And I think it's critical for other advertising stocks as well, including Netflix and Trade Desk or Google or Microsoft or really any company that you might be investing in that's exposed to ads, especially after the Apple disaster. Now, this is the earnings transcript. I got it from Seeking Alpha, which right now, if you go to metkevin.com slash Seeking Alpha, you'll actually get the best possible pricing with an over 50, well, it's actually 50% off. They're matching the coupon code that I'm giving to course members who join up for the courses. So go to metkevin.com slash Seeking Alpha to sign up for their premium subscription and you'll get access to all these transcripts as well. Super easy to use and a lot uh, less expensive than like the Bloomberg term, right? But I want to talk about this. Look at this. Let's talk about the macro environment. You stated that Q3 is roughly flattish as thus far. And so what they're noticing, and let's go to some of the conclusions here, what they're noticing at Snapchat is right here. We're observing a fairly steady deceleration in advertising demand over the last year. Uh, that's a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a red flag, especially in the advertising space. They're saying we're seeing these various headwinds put pressure on the earnings of a wide variety of companies. And this is directly impacting the demand for advertising. So in other words, the macro pressures we're seeing, whether it's less consumer demand or inflation or whatever, are making it harder for companies to be, remain profitable, other companies that would ordinarily be advertising. But what they're doing is they're actually, one of the first things they're cutting is advertising in a bull market. My thesis would have been right. Companies would have spent more money on advertising, but we went into a bear market and look at what Snap's telling us. One of the first things to actually get cut is advertising. That's because advertising is one of the very few line items in a company's cost structure that can be reduced immediately. It's a really interesting thing to think of. And in my opinion, it also makes you want to start thinking about coming out of the recession, right? Because if we come out of the recession, and uh, whether we're in one now or we're going to go in one or it's going to be close to one, when we rotate out of the recession, you're going to want to pay attention to companies like financials, but also advertising companies, because like they say here, that advertising can get ramped up very, very quickly. The problem is when you're on the downside of that slope, it's really easy to turn it off very quickly, right? So bummer, uh, and again, was wrong. We also know that uh, Trade Desk, they, uh, they did not end up getting the Netflix contract, which was a big bummer. That was a big deal uh, that they even hinted about right over here in the Trade Desk earnings call where, uh, you know, Netflix was talking about, uh, uh, you know, essentially having a straight publisher uh, about people that can do all of the ad matching or whatever. And there was this almost suggestion that uh, it, it Trade Desk would be one of those companies that, that could be used for Netflix because the former CFO at Netflix is now on the Trade Desk board, which is kind of incredible. But that didn't end up happening. Microsoft got that deal. But what I wanted to say over here with Trade Desk was the following. Trade Desk is really suffering a similar problem that Apple is. And it has to do with that Apple ID and people being able to opt out of their private data being used for advertising, which makes that advertising dollar less targeted, which makes it less valuable. So companies are less interested in spending money on that advertising uh, style. Now, Trade Desk talks about this fancy idea here that, oh, well, we only need about 10% of people to be logged in and then we can model the rest of people after that for advertising to them. I really question that. Uh, and Snapchat discusses in their, uh, their earnings call not only this lower bids per action and this falling demand for ads and the falling overall advertising spending, but they also spend quite a bit of time complaining 
about Apple and uh, this how, how challenging it has been to really target customers. And one of the things about this is, you know, this Apple issue has been going on for over a year now where Apple has implemented their new privacy rules and companies just aren't figuring out how to transition to a world with Apple. And the same thing is happening at, at Facebook. So here's what you've got. You've got Apple makes this massive change on privacy and how people can get targeted. And so what happens? Well, you get Meta saying things like, oh, well, we'll be able to figure out. And Trade Desk, oh, well, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. And Snapchat's like, oh, don't worry. We'll figure it out. We'll be fine even without, uh, without the Apple analytics, we, which we used to rely on and make so much money on. Okay, great. So what are these companies actually doing? And this is what gets concerning for me for the advertising space, and I think it's a big headwind to be aware of, is Meta is like, uh, uh, let's go to VR. Yeah, that'll help save our business. I'm like, that's a terrible idea. We just did a fundamental analysis with course members on Facebook and we're like, you're, you're going all in on the metaverse, changing your company name uh, from, from Facebook to, to Meta uh, to try to capitalize on this VR kind of rush. But nobody's even figured out if people like VR yet. You put the VR goggles on, you get a headache. We're, we're so far from the metaverse. I mean, I'll go play World of Warcraft if I want to feel like I'm in the metaverse almost. Uh, it's, it's quite sad. Uh, so. At the same time, what's Snapchat doing? Well, Snapchat's also somewhat scrambling. A good bulk of their earnings call, you know what they end up talking about? Instead of talking about VR, they talk about AR and how they're going to be able to have this awesome augmented reality system and be able to benefit off of it because people will be able to put dinosaurs in their Snapchat stories or whatever. I don't know. But my point of saying this, oh yeah, and then of course you have trade desks that's kind of like, oh, don't worry, we have a UID and we only need 10% of people logged in. We can figure advertising out. My point is you have all of these companies that originally are like, yeah, come spend your advertising dollars with us and uh, you'll get a good return on your money because we could target people well. Well, Apple took that away. Apple killed all of that. And now you see these advertising companies are quite frankly scrambling. Meta is trying to turn itself into the future VR company because they're scrambling because the ads just ain't working. Snapchat is trying to turn themselves into an augmented reality company because the ad numbers just aren't showing the growth anymore. And the problem with them is they can't even make a buck. They have, a t they have billions of dollars in convertible bonds. They raised lots of money when the stock price was higher. That was smart. But this is a money furnace. And so if you're betting on these advertising companies, you have to bet that Trade Desk is telling you the truth that they can figure out what the hell they're doing with just 10% of the data they used to have. That you're betting on Snapchat, you're betting that augmented reality is actually going to go somewhere, or that VR is going to go somewhere. If anything, this whole advertising conundrum has a lot of people, especially even like Bank of America analysts saying the following, invest in Apple. Because maybe they're the ones that when you're logged in with iCloud into a million different things and they, they're tracking your uh, Apple wallet spend or whatever, maybe they have all the data and maybe you should just advertise through Apple. Uh, this is exactly why some people also say Google might have some benefits because if you're logged in on, uh, on, on YouTube, for example, people, you know, it's easier to target ads to you because they could see what videos you're watching. If you're watching Blippi all day long, you're probably five, uh, you know, and if you're watching Meet Kevin all day long, you're probably 35. And if you're watching other finance creators, maybe you're 18 because, you know, we'd like to go a little bit more detailed and some people do a little more surface level. That's fine. Just target a different audience, right? Uh, it, but, but YouTube can determine that. But if you're not logged in, and, all, and, and then you look at these advertising companies and, and what you're getting is companies like Snapchat going, oh, yeah, 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 uh, obviously longest, most exciting opportunity is augmented reality. Really? That sounds like I'm going to have to make a YOLO bet on augmented reality here if I want to invest in Snapchat. Now, I want to be crystal clear. Uh, and, and this, by the way, is also a problem for Netflix. You know, all of this stuff is a problem for Netflix too. Because think about it. Remember, Netflix is coming out with their uh, their their ad-supported model. It's like, okay, cool. Like, you're you guys are also going to have these sorts of issues as as an advertiser with Microsoft, right? But anyway, uh, the the point of all of this is that these companies, all of them. If the stock market does this, which is kind of what it's been feeling like because we've seen this little bit of a rebound here, these companies will rise with the tides, right? But the problem is a lot of these advertising companies have really big 
anchor blocks hanging from them. And it's just going to make future earnings misses more likely, and they're probably going to be more frustrating companies to own compared to companies that just aren't exposed to this advertising conundrum right now, and certainly a declining advertising market. We've been talking about ads going down since January, and we, we see less sponsors in each video, right? This is why I have to keep sponsoring myself. Use the coupon code down below, right? Sponsoring myself because there are less other advertisers. We milked what we could last month. I'm sorry, I know like a thousand of you were like, damn, Kevin, a few too many ad integrations, okay? A few too many. I'm like, shit, man, I know we ain't gonna last anymore. We gotta pump them out. Let's get them all done. And, and then, you know, sure enough, they, they don't last, uh, you know, because, uh, because the market's slowing down. We saw that coming. We saw that writing on the wall. So uh, anyway, look, my bottom line is, uh, advertising companies, I would be very, very choosy with advertising companies right now, especially in my opinion, Meta, I, I, I don't agree with VR. I don't agree with AR. I'm, I like Trade Desk, but I really want to see those advertising budgets bottom out at companies before I could really see myself go heavy again. And again, you can't just look at the stock price and go, oh, but it's up, you know, 10% in the last week or whatever. That, that's macro, right? That's rising tide. I want to be heavy on companies that will rise with the macro tide, but will also fundamentally perform extremely well because, again, that'll insulate me with future earnings and it'll, it'll protect me in the long term. In 10 years, I'm not worried about these companies turning into a Sears and they're going bankrupt because they never figured out how to make money. Uh, anyway, look, don't get me wrong. I think Snapchat is great for the people who use it. Their maps feature seems really cool. You know, I watched a little bit of Ryan Reynolds show on there and stuff like love Ryan Reynolds. Like th there's some cool stuff, uh, but they just can't figure out how to make money off of it. So in terms of Snap, I don't know, problems. We'll see. These are things to pay attention to. These are trends. But bottom line, hey, I was wrong on advertising and I want to be honest with you and I want to give you sort of my opinion in terms of uh, where I would be looking to get back into advertising and when. And hopefully you got that from this video. And if you like my content, consider subscribing, consider checking out the programs of Building Your Wealth and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.